Tell me if you've heard this situation before, a country led by a few powerful men with unmatched arrogance invading another country swiftly, to flex their muscles. They do this through the use of their forces along with proxy states that give them a justification to invade, along with more manpower. No, this does not involve Russia and the Donbass, this story involves Imperial Japan and an obscure regime it propped up. World War II was a complex and global conflict, and an obscure theater of the war was the Southeast Asian Front. Southeast Asian Front was fought mainly between the Imperial Japanese and the British, Americans, Dutch, and all their colonies. The area contested during this front spanned all of Southeast Asia along with some of South Asia, which included the then countries of Thailand, British Burma, parts of India, French Indochina, British Malaya, the US's Philippines, the Dutch East Indies, Australia's New Guinea, along with many other smaller nations in the region. Imperial Japan conquered most if not all of these territories in Southeast Asia, but could not manage to conquer some countries, including Australia's New Guinea, and India. If we zoom in on one country that resisted Japanese colonization, India, we see something very peculiar. What are these tiny colored pieces of land? Here is this mysterious regime's flag and leader, this much forgotten regime or quote unquote independent state would be Free India, or Azad Hind, which was a government heavily supported by the Imperial Japanese and its military. Free India was founded on October 21, 1943, by Subhash Chandra Bose, an Indian leader who wanted independence from Britain with his unconventional methods. Subhas Chandra Bose was a very influential leader in trying to gain India's independence from Britain. He served as a contrast to another leading figure in India's fight for independence, Gandhi. While Gandhi peacefully protested with civil disobedience, Subhas Chandra Bose tried to use the military or an armed force to gain India's independence. Bose was also willing to do anything to gain support, going as far as to seriously negotiate with Adolf Hitler to gain India's independence. It's not like working with the Imperial Japanese to gain independence was any better. The Japanese declare themselves as the superior race and massacred millions in China, Korea, Burma, the Philippines, and more. Imperial Japan's most cruel act was the rape of Nanjing in the nationalist China's capital, with some very graphic images that summarize its horrors. Mr. Bose was so desperate that after the Japanese could not realize his dream for independence due to their surrender in World War II, he even tried to convince the Soviet Union to help his cause. Talk about having no moral compass. Imperial Japan had many motives for conquering one of the largest empires in history in terms of the amount of land and water they controlled. Their first motive for their empire was to prove their racial and cultural superiority, and the second motive was to get more resources. They wanted more land for Japanese people, which sounded a lot like Hitler's Lebensraum, and to spread Japanese culture and influence all across the world as the superior culture or Yamato race which sounded a lot like Aryan race theory, but the cultural aspect was usually emphasized more than the racial part. They also needed more resources to fuel their country to fight the Second Sino-Japanese War, which eventually led them to conquer all of Southeast Asia for precious rubber, oil, and steel. Finally, the Imperial Japanese also had a sense of military superiority ever since the Meiji Restoration, where they had not lost a single piece of land, gained Korea, Taiwan, and ruled a large chunk of islands in the Pacific. This made them very arrogant, which made them think they could conquer any land at will, and they would do anything to prove their military superiority, which inevitably led to atrocities. Unlike atrocities committed by the Nazi Germans though, these atrocities were mostly committed on a whim by Imperial Japanese infantrymen, who would personally commit actions like this.
At the height of their power, the Imperial Japanese controlled this much land. Imperial Japan was so willing to ally with Subhash Chandra Bose because they used him to sell the eventual Japanese occupation of India as a liberation movement from Western powers instead of a bloodthirsty diversion that would help the Japanese win the Second Sino-Japanese War, by cutting off aid to China coming from British India. In fact, the Imperial Japanese consistently tried to frame themselves as colonial liberators from the evil Western powers with their conquests of Asia. In reality, the colonies were not liberated from the West, but put under new management, going from a Western colonial power to a more cruel Eastern colonial power. Instead of just economically exploiting the Asian colonies as the West did, Imperial Japan would physically exploit them by using comfort girls and purges to go along with economic exploitation. The Japanese also used bows as a recruitment tool, as roughly 45,000 soldiers of the Indian National Army under Bose's leadership fought alongside the Japanese. Despite Subhash Chandra Bose's wants and dreams to unite India under his rule, they theoretically only controlled a chain of small Indian Ocean islands called the Andaman and Nicobar Islands along with a very insignificant portion of the country in the east, shown here. To compound these struggles, they could not effectively implement their nation's government into the already insignificant amount of land they did control. Imperial Japanese forces outright controlled Free India's small amounts of territory in mainland India, and they also de facto ruled the Andaman and Nicobar Islands with their policemen and infantry despite Free India controlling the policy making. To be frank, Free India as a country with borders and sovereignty was a concept in people's minds, and not in reality. The Imperial Japanese despite Subhash Chandra Bose's intentions, was as outrageously cruel to the population of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands as they were to the people in their occupations in countries like China and the Philippines. Among the most disgusting things, the Imperial Japanese forced many women to become prostitutes, and executed anyone who showed signs of separatism or was deemed a threat which eventually killed roughly 75% of the population of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands that numbered around 40,000 people. Most countries simply ignored Free India as a foolish puppet entity. But the Italians, Nazis, Imperial Japanese, and all their puppet states or allied states recognized them as legitimate. Free India crumbled after the Japanese and Indian National Army incursions into India in 1944 failed, and officially ceased existing on August 18, 1945, when its founder, Subhash Chandra Bose, and its only leader died in an Imperial Japanese plane crash over Taiwan. Subhash Chandra Bose said, Give me blood, and I shall give you freedom, but his creation. Free India, only succeeded in bleeding Indian soldiers, but never realized any of the freedom or independence they were fighting for. Free India hid the cruelty of the Axis powers with a noble goal, independence. There is a reason this regime is usually forgotten and never shown on maps of World War II, because Free India could best be described as a country that existed only on paper.